we're at the actual site where the empire of M.W. Savage existed as far as the Dan Patch stables, the enclosed track, and the outdoor track, and the Savage Mansion back on the hill all existed. The amazing thing about all of this is that today, in 1989, there is not a stone standing of any of this vast facility. Joe, why don't you just give us a quick rundown on what we're looking at here as we pan through this scene. Okay, Hugh. Uh, actually, right behind us, uh, looking north, uh, was the rotunda of the Dan Patch Stable. And the uh, stables was 400 feet long, so the east wing went off in this uh, direction, 155 feet. And then there was one going off to the west there, 155 feet. And it was attached to the one half mile, totally enclosed, steam heated track that, where they could train year round. Now, the entire facility is only a short distance Today, from Highway 13, we can hear a lot of traffic noise going back in the background, but in those days, all you heard was probably the whistle of the engine of the Dan Patch line and uh, occasionally a horse nickering in the distance, uh, right? Yes, that's correct, Hugh, and also the line, uh, the railroad that's running just due south of us was uh, became known as the Chicago Northwestern, so you actually had two trains going through here, the Dan Patch to our west, and right south of us, the uh, Chicago Northwestern. Okay, and that Dan Patch line, of course, still exists today. Uh, yes, it is now known as the Sioux, Sioux line. All right, well, it's exciting to be here. We're at the actual site, and it's very exciting, Joe, to have you here to provide us with all this information and to see all of this wonderful footage. And now, in just a short time, we're going to be up at your homestead where we're going to be looking over some fabulous Dan Patch historical material. That will be fun. Great. Joe, here we are at the homestead that I've heard so much about. When was this all built? This, uh, Hugh, was built in 1906 by my father, George Egan. And you were born and raised here? Yes, sir. I was born here in 1924 and have uh, spent most of my years here in this little homestead. And this entire tract of land is basically as it was during the days of Dan Patch at the turn of the century. The property we are standing on is, Hugh, and uh, in fact, they used to bring Dan in here and give him spring water from our spring. Probably right in this very spot. I wouldn't doubt it a bit, Hugh. It could have been very close to this okay. spot. Well, now we should tell you what we're standing by here. This is the training exercise sulky of the great Dan Patch. This is the real item, and it's part of Joe Egan's fabulous collection of Dan Patch historical items. Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about this special sulky? Because earlier in the video, we've mentioned that Dan Patch had crooked back legs and this has some special construction that I think our viewers would like to hear about. Yes, uh, Hugh, uh, Dan actually had a real bad left rear leg that he would throw out occasionally. So he had to have a wide rear sulky. The wheels had to be widened out, and these are actually about center to center, about uh, 58 inches. And if you notice over on this left wheel, that is a wooden rim. And the reason for that was that Dan wouldn't get his leg all torn up when he got it caught in the wheel, which he'd do occasionally. So the wood would just shatter just and shatter no and problem. Just go kaput. So you actually have a metal rim on one side and a wood rim on the other. That is correct. Interesting. Okay. Is there any other uh, special features of this sulky that would be exclusive to Dan Patch other than the width of it? Uh, just the width and the uh, uh, wooden rim on the left side. And actually, this sulky here was on display at Savage, Minnesota, during the Dan Patch days in 1954 and uh, was shown as one of Dan Patch's training and exercise sulkies and I wouldn't doubt they had come in here with it at one time. Okay, well tell me this, what would be the reason for Dan Patch and his driver to come all the way from the track a couple of miles away up to your homestead in this driveway? Well, Hugh, that's a good question. But in those days, uh, some of the trainers and grooms and uh, drivers they became wise early in the game, and they noticed the horses were becoming track sour. A little bored with going around the same with circle. Their all the daily okay. uh, workouts. So what they do is bring them out in the country. All the roads out here at that time were gravel, okay. and they bring them out and exercise them on the country roads. All right. And when Dan was on this very spot in your driveway, where did the water come from, and who supplied him with the water? How did that all work? Did they let you know in advance that? 
Stan was coming up, or how did well, they handle it? Well, I wasn't alive at that time, but my older brothers, I'm sure, brought the water up from our spring, which is about 200 feet to our uh, to west river. of us here. Okay. And it still runs. It's a natural spring, puts out a stream about a foot and a half wide and about two inches deep, never stops. No kidding. Yes. So this was the place, and Dan Patch made frequent visits to this very spot. Uh, yes, sir, he did, Hugh, and he was uh, driven by my cousin Mike Egan a good deal, a deal of the time because Mike was his last handler. No kidding. Yes, Mike took over after uh, Mr. Charlie Plummer left the employ of uh, okay. Mr. Savage in 1910. Fascinating history. Now, Joe, just over here we see the cutter, and of course I recognize that cutter from old black and white pictures that I've seen of M.W. Savage with Dan Patch hooked up to this cutter, and this is the original item? This is the original item, Hugh, and that cutter was made uh, special for Mr. Savage and for Dan to be hooked to in 1903. And Mr. Savage used to drive his friends around in Minneapolis, around 26 in Portland. Mm -hmm. And also uh, Mr. Savage's son, Harold, used to drive his little friends around when he was only 10, 11 years old with Dan hitched to that, delivering Christmas presents. I've I have those, a picture of that. I've heard those stories. The fastest pacing harness horse in the world and so well-tempered you could hook him up behind a sleigh and a 10-year-old boy. He's very ride. docile, yes. And uh, Dan, I believe, loved it. He oh, loved the attention. I'm, I'm yes. sure he did. Well, Joe, in just a little bit, we're going to be looking at a few more of your valuable historical items that are connected with the M.W. Savage Empire and, of course, with the great Dan Pat. So uh, we'll check in with you here in just a minute or so and uh, see what we have there. Well, thank you, Hugh. Okay. <laughs> 